This video is brought to you by Anchor. Three and a half years ago, this device changed my life in the way I think about computing. This, as you may remember, is the third generation iPad Pro 11 inch launched in 2018 alongside the 12.9 inch. And it has served as the basis of what the iPad Pro is for the past like four years. I mean, the M2 model, which I'm about to pull out, doesn't look that much different. The hardware in here was so ahead of its time and so much better than whatever the Mac team was putting out. If you can remember, the 2016 MacBook was a disaster, a fiasco. The keyboard sucked and the chips inside sucked because Intel sucks. Um, but beyond that, um, this was a breath of fresh air, not only because of the incredible hardware and Apple Silicon inside the A12X in here and A12Z2 are still very powerful. Um, the operating system was also something different, not as capable as Mac OS even back then, but it was definitely more distinct than iOS had been on iPads for years. As you can remember, or maybe remember, um, we had the dock introduced, which sort of made this more multitasking oriented. And of course the second gen pencil was a really nice addition. It charges right on the top of your iPad. And yeah, this was just such an exciting device to use um, opposed to a MacBook. It was refreshing. It's portable, it's quick, and again, it was just as powerful as some of the i5 chips on the inside of MacBooks that were even more expensive. But as time went on, a lot of the features here were brought to Macs. Um, in 2020, we had the M1 chip implemented into the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, and even those even though those looked similar to their previous generations, the power was unmatched. And then of course, the uh, Mac became iPad Pro-ified. Um, here is the 14 inch MacBook Pro, a go-to laptop that I use all the time still alongside my 16 inch, which I mainly use for my content creation. Let me move my iPad out of the way here. I'm getting used to this new setup here. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, but yeah, here is the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And although I'm not gonna like do too much with it, um, it has a high refresh rate display, it has a very powerful processor on the inside, and it has a more industrial look, more ports, all of that. So all of what was wrong with the Mac has been corrected, which is why I, myself, and so many other people sort of gravitate towards this more. Not only because of that, the increased power and whatever, but because the operating system is just more capable in so many aspects and has been opposed to iPad OS. Until now, um, Apple just implemented or rather re-implemented a feature and that is external monitor support with Stage Manager here. And I have the M2 iPad Pro to complement that experience. Again, it's, and let me unlock it here. It's not that much different from the previous gen iPad Pro with the M1 chip. It's not that much different than the 2018 iPad Pro 12.9 inch launched almost four years ago but the software is now making it so much more versatile beyond the sort of platform or iPad form factor that it's been trapped in since, you know, it's launch in 2015. So yeah, as I just said, external monitor support is back in iPad OS. It had to be taken out of the first official release because it was just too buggy. Uh, it still is, but it's just good enough to be put back into 16.2, which is coming soon. And it's currently in the public beta if you want to give it a try. And so far, I haven't run into too many issues. I've had a couple springboard crashes and weirdness, but for the most part, it is working as it should here, uh, giving you the unique stage manager experience, which is very, unlike Mac OS and resizable windows, I do prefer that, but there's something about iPad OS, the stage manager that's more organized, especially if you're looking at that carousel view here, if I can bring this up so um, I can pull up the dock here and click on Notion so I can have some of the carousel apps over here. I can bring up YouTube. Switching back and forth is just nice, fluid, um, not buggy as you can see there. And it keeps you a little more organized because again, you can just stack window on top of window on top of window in Mac OS till the cows come home. This is just a uniquely iPad experience and it keeps the experience consistent on your external display and also on your iPad. So, you know, you're buying an iPad for a reason. Uh, Christopher Lolly, good friend of mine and you know, iPad YouTuber, if you will, says that the iPad is a more focused experience. So you're getting that here and I do enjoy it. I, I think it does keep me on task a little more. I'm a little jumbled, maybe a little ADHD, but um, yeah, it just keeps me on one task at a time here. It, maybe in a sort of limiting way, I kind of wish there were resizable windows, but you know, maybe Apple will implement that, maybe they won't. For the time being, I think they should improve this concept and see if it's actually worthwhile. I'm not completely sure yet, but I like it quite a bit here, we can go full screen. Um, Safari has been great, I like using Safari for web services like Gmail and Docs, this is the script for this video actually, just the ideas that I wrote down. 
Um, so I'm enjoying it so far, and this experience is also important for creative apps like Lightroom, for example. I can bring this full screen as well. Um, I don't like doing stuff always on a smaller display like this, um, especially since this doesn't tilt as much as I'd like it to. So the fact that I can sit back and relax and just work on a photo here and have the UI over to the right, just like I would with my Mac, is really ideal also too. You can have you know an app down here or just you know, just use your iPad normally while also doing work. Great for multitasking here. Um, so for creative apps, for general productivity, um, the external monitor support is a step in the right direction, a new beginning, if you will, for iPad. It brings just unseen functionality to this and makes it an even more versatile device. And just talking about the sort of screen situation here, I wanna next talk about just how Apple expects you to use your iPad with the external monitor support or with an external display. This is like the first mode, if you will, using the Magic Keyboard, USB-C, or you know HDMI or whatever you have with a monitor here in this sort of configuration, where you can bring the cursor up and down you know, to both the iPad screen and your external monitor. I like it a lot because you can just kind of multitask and be doing two things at once. However, and of course though, you can still connect your iPad without the use of a Magic Keyboard. All you gotta do is connect via USB-C, HDMI, or DisplayPort, I think that works, via an adapter, obviously, and then you just have to connect your own keyboard, trackpad, mouse, preferably a trackpad because iPadOS is a gesture-based operating system. And you can have sort of like this Mac experience, you know, no iPad in the way. You can just be using iPadOS like so with your iPad off to the side. And I quite like this, especially if I'm gonna be like video editing, you know, I mean, if I don't wanna have a distraction down here, I can just focus on a window like this. Um, this is not my app of choice, and I'll explain that later. But yeah, the fact that I can do work like I normally would on my Mac, just sort of face up, staring at the monitor here, doing you know video editing or photo editing, is something I quite enjoy here. Uh, and the fact that I can use you know whatever keyboard I want as well is nice too. With my iPad off to the side as well, playing maybe a YouTube video, maybe having a Spotify window open here, or maybe in the future using it as a viewer, or maybe having a files window out there, just like you would if you had like your laptop, you know, off to the right or left or whatever. So yeah, the experience here is of course still kind of half baked, but very functional. And I'm excited to see what else I can do with this experience in my workflow. And this experience specifically is made possible thanks to today's video sponsor, Anchor, and their amazing tech accessories for iPad. If your workflow revolves around one, then you're definitely gonna wanna consider the Anchor 551 Stand Hub, the world's first USB-C hub that's also a foldable stand design for iPad. Its tilt and height adjustable arm offers an insane variety of angles and positions to use your iPad in, whether you're typing, viewing content, or drawing with the Apple Pencil. The stand also packs a plethora of ports, like a 4K 60 Hz capable HDMI port, SD and micro SD card readers for transferring media, as well as a headphone jack and USB-A ports, all while charging your iPad at up to 100 watts if plugged in. This is the ultimate multitasking hub for new iPads running iPadOS 16, specifically models with an M1 chip and up that can drive the stage manager experience on an external display. And opposed to just plugging into a display via USB-C, you can do just that, but also get the incredible selection of ports with the hub, allowing you to import media, use wired headphones and USB devices for your work. And because the display output is over HDMI, you don't have to buy a more expensive USB-C monitor to get the same plug and play experience. But if you're looking for something more portable, then you should definitely check out the Anchor 541 6-in-1 USB-C hub. It fits snugly on the port side of your iPad, and more importantly, it offers almost all the same ports the 551 Stand Hub does, so you get the most out of your tablet and peripherals and accessories on the go. I'll leave links in the video description and a pinned comment, but you can also just search Anchor Hub for iPad if you're interested in checking these accessories out. So yeah, external monitor support with the stage manager experience is a huge deal. I think it gives the iPad Pro a bit of a new beginning. It's more than just an iPad now. You can hook it up to a display and expand the experience when you need to and also contract that down and have it portable. And you know, as an iPad, when you want it to be, which is the whole point of an iPad now. So you get that versatility, a versatility that I've been waiting for four years. So this makes this device a lot more just enticing to me as a Mac user. However, uh, where it still falls short is with the operating system features wise and more specifically pro apps. And this is a whole discussion I'll probably have with Chris Lolly and other people. I've talked about it before. You know, pro apps are, you know, it, it's like a sort of a subjective thing. You know, pro to one person is not pro to another person. You know, there are apps on the App Store that you consider pro, but I'm talking like Apple suite of apps or Apple suite of apps like Logic, Final Cut, 
motion, all of that. And you know, I could sit here and talk about Final Cut until the cows come home. That's the app that I want to see. But you know, if that was implemented, we would see improvements across the board with other video editing apps because the issue is there is no competition, you know, there is no like industry standard on the iPad. It seems like Apple, at this point in time, I think there's things that are happening behind the scenes. I have no idea. Um, I can only imagine, I can only guess because, um, you know, according to my good buddy, Christopher Lawley, he's noticed himself just some frameworks and things that might point towards Final Cut Pro on the iPad and apps like it. Um, but nonetheless, Apple needs to take this platform seriously, especially since they put a Mac chip in it. I mean, this is like serious performance. You know, the MacBook Air can do a ton of stuff and it has this exact chip in there. Um, so the iPad should be able to as well. And the only way it will be able to is if Apple, you know, the first party company brings developers attention to it and says, hey, this platform is powerful. We're putting our best apps on there in whatever way or form they deem necessary or good. I'm not saying Final Cut would look exactly like this. I'm not saying that Pro apps should look exactly like their Mac counterparts, but they certainly should be similar and you know equally featured or almost equally featured. Um, with regard to Final Cut Pro, I'd like to see it look something like this. Maybe not as scaled or not scaled so small, but as you can see here, I could probably work on things with the Apple Pencil. That would be nice. That's the whole point of this platform, you know, not using a mouse, not using a trackpad, using your finger and just being able to do some of the work that I would normally do on a MacBook, um, you know, in a more comfortable way or in a more versatile, fast paced way. I don't know, maybe there was a project I'd be shooting out in, you know, a city of some sort. I just, you know, drop footage in and just get to work on here and maybe like sync it to the cloud and finish it on my Mac later. I don't think I'm ever going to be someone that just purely works off of an iPad. But you should be able to, again, considering how much horsepower is in here. And yes, we are seeing apps like DaVinci Resolve come and Octane and all of that, but those are two very specific apps for very specific workflows. Not everybody uses DaVinci Resolve for, you know, like quick or more efficient video editing. I'm a firm believer in Final Cut Pro. Sure, it might lack features that Premiere and DaVinci have, but for me, I can get all my work done with it. I think it's very efficient with its magnetic timeline and all of that. And you know, I think it should be on here. It's about time. I hope that Apple is working on it behind the scenes. Um, but again, I'll get back to the point of if they bring their suite of apps on here and also encourage Adobe to, then the ecosystem of apps will get even better. Oh, here's an app that I could like never get into and really haven't used since like three and a half years ago. This is LumaFusion. This is the most fully fledged video editor that you have available on iPad. And now this app is being uh, made for Android devices as well. So they're just making it even more cross-platform and hard to develop and hard to optimize. Um, I'm also getting a lot of my negativity from Christopher Lolly, who has every right to hate this app because he used this longer than anybody I ever know and it gave him just so much trouble, especially editing HEVC video and, and more. So while this is a fully fledged, you know, uh, video editing application with, you know, a lot of capability here, it's not comparable to that of Premiere or Final Cut or DaVinci. And I'm glad DaVinci's coming, but again, this is more your general video editor, linear timeline type thing. It's kind of a cross between Final Cut Pro and Premiere in my opinion. And yeah, it's just not good. It's just not good. It could be a lot better. It needs to be more refined. The UI could be better. The stability could be better. Um, and the only, you know, person or entity or first party that I can make an app better is of course, Apple Final Cut Pro would be optimized specifically for this chip, just like it is on my MacBook Pro back there for an M series chip. So, you know, again, I might be rambling. I might be going in circles. If we see an app like this come out, even though not everybody is going to use it, it is going to raise the bar for what apps should be on this platform and it will make developers take the iPad again more seriously as it should be taken because the hardware on the inside is Mac level. That was the argument that I made last year when the M1 chip was put into the uh, iPad Pro M1 or the 2021 model, I was like, Let's see some software capabilities to match that. Another app that I think could be a lot better is Photoshop. And you know, it looks good. I've heard it's featured. I've read reviews and I'm sure you can do a lot with it. 
Um, but there's a tool in here that is not there. I don't even know what it's called, honestly. I, I'm not the guy to go to for terminology with regard to like, you know, applications, creative apps. But there's a tool that I need to where I like literally just cut things out sort of angularly, like it's almost like, like just going from point to point to point to point where I cut something out with precision because I don't trust the auto select stuff like this. I don't, it, it works okay. I don't wanna also draw on here like this because that's harder to do. Um, it's just easier to really zoom up and just go point, 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 point. I'll, maybe I'll put like a screen recording on here so you can know what I'm talking about. It's like a vector tool, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, that's not here. That's something I do in every single Photoshop composition that I make because I you know, expose things differently, move stuff around, cut things out, whatever. That's not on here, that should be on here. Why is that not on here? I have no idea. I don't know what the MO is. I don't know why Adobe isn't making this as comparable to what it could be on the Mac. I don't know why the UI looks different. It should be the same. So, you know, again, I know there's Affinity Photo, but like, I don't really wanna use that. I wanna use Photoshop because I save, I save stuff to the cloud. I wanna like open it on my Mac. So maybe I'm the wrong person to talk to if you wanna go like, you know, completely and only iPad for your workflow. Christopher Lolly again is, you know, someone you're gonna wanna consult about that. But I mean, like, it's just disappointing. Like Photoshop and Final Cut are the apps that I use. And yes, you know, maybe that sounds selfish to bring up, but you know, there are other apps too on here that sh should be more featured, should be more fully fledged considering the hardware on the inside. And I hope too that um, when you do open apps, on the full screen experience or external display experience with Stage Manager that you will get more of a Mac-like experience to take advantage of the screen real estate. I don't see why that would be a problem, again, because the hardware on the inside literally runs those apps perfectly fine on a Mac. So um, yeah, I mean, hopefully this doesn't turn into a bit of a rant, but you know, I'm not, entirely satisfied with the state of the iPad. You know, a lot of us aren't, a lot of us want to see this, you know, device become more capable and more compatible with our workflows. And I'm here to say, like, I thought that speaking about photo and video editing is a bit selfish, but no, it's, it's you know, like media creation is so wide. You can do it for your own personal use. You could do it for more creative use if you're doing movies or short films or whatever. In my case, I do YouTube content, which is like a combination of more quick, efficient content, but also some filmmaking, some storytelling, color grading, all of that, importing photos, photo editing, all of that, you know, so, there are good apps, but there need to be better apps to set the standard higher to complement this device. It's so nice. Like the iPad Pro is still one of my favorite devices, even though I struggle to figure out how I should use it. The processor on the inside is incredible. It's overpowered at this point for what this iPad can do. The display is beautiful, specifically on the 12.9 inch. We got mini LED. This is gonna be the standard, I think, with iPad Pros in the future, especially if they get bigger, which is a whole nother topic for another day here. I want this device to be something that I grab and put in my backpack opposed to a MacBook because it is unique. It is portable and lightweight and all that. I hope that the battery life gets better as well, but that's again, another speculatory type video that we could do another time here. But um, yeah, I'm just referencing my notes. Um, this is a magical, focused, versatile, fluid experience. I'm reading that off of what I wrote, but it's true. There's no other better way to put it. I still you know, view this device like I did when it came out. You know, the reason why it hasn't changed is because it is so good in terms of the hardware here. There really isn't much to change. Maybe slim the bezels down, maybe put the camera somewhere else, but like, it's excellent. It was ahead of its time, but now it's behind its time because the Mac is doing everything that it does and better and more capably and with more powerful processors. Um, not that you need to put like an M1 Max in here. That's not what I'm asking. The M2 chip, um, as we can see here, if I can find the Geekbench page, is more than powerful enough for work on the go and for most people. And any more of a powerful chip would drain the battery too much. So it's perfectly balanced in terms of hardware. The software is just not there yet. So I'm waiting patiently like all of you, but regardless, I'm trying to implement this more into my daily life. And as I showed in the external display stage manager demo that we did, um, it's now more compatible because I can sit down, I can do my emails, I can send files, I can do some photo editing, all of that here. So it's an exciting time for iPad. iPad OS 16 seems like a new beginning, but we are at the beginning. Um, we were at like the pre-beginning, you know, like last year with the M1 chip. So 
I'm being patient like all of you, but yeah, I expect a lot more from iPad and I'm excited to see what is in store for its future. And that is about it for this video here. Check out my link to Anchor once again, if you haven't already in a pinned comment or in the video description. Um, and as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in the next one.